So, uh, so thank you all for coming today uh, and giving me this opportunity to kind of share what are the uh, emerging technologies in the state. Um, about three years ago, the, uh, the governor said we need a UAV program, an unmanned aircraft systems, unmanned air vehicle program. Uh, I'm not calling them the evil D word. Uh, if you need to use the D word, you can use the D word, but I won't do it. Um, how many of you have um, something like this in your, in your classrooms already? Uh, it's a phantom. 1500 bucks. you can buy it on Amazon, they're selling 2500 of them a month. Um, this industry, this technology is here, it's not coming, it's here. Uh, so you've got one already? And you're flying them outside? No. <laughs> you're not working anyway, right? That's good. Uh, so, so this is the big challenge right now, is, is how do we manage these programs, how do we build these technologies? Uh, it's about three years ago, like I said, uh, North Carolina Department of Transportation Division of Aviation gave me a phone call and said, we need to make sure North Carolina is incorporating these technologies, is building for this future. Uh, how about coming home to North Carolina and, uh, and, and building us an ecosystem that supports this growth? Um, I'm from here. I was born in High Point. I went to school at Catawba College over in Salisbury. I was a, a math computer science undergrad with a history and, uh, and honors minors. Uh, I did play ball for three years while I was there. I uh, took off from there, went out to the Tennessee Space Institute out in Tullahoma, Tennessee, and got a math master's. Uh, spent my summers there working out at NASA Dryden, now Edwards, uh, doing flight tests. Uh, ended up moving down to Georgia working for aerospace companies, ended up working for a little software company doing artificial intelligence to make these things smarter. Uh, while I was there, I picked up an aerospace MBA from Tennessee. Um, and since then, I've kind of turned into more of this project development, program development um, role. Uh, where I can't really tell you what I do, but you know, when you're growing up as a math kind of guy, everybody tells you you can do anything, even nobody tells you actually what that is. So, um, <laughs> so, so here I am now, uh, a career aviation guy, but I'm not a pilot. Uh, I'm not prior military. Uh, I'm not an aerospace engineer. So at NC State, they don't really know what to do with me either. Uh, so I get my own group at state. Uh, but we are flying weekly. Uh, I've got a team, actually they would have been out in the field today, but it was raining all morning and it was supposed to rain this afternoon, so that's why they weren't planning on flying today. But I'll show you some of the aircraft we're flying, um, some of the pictures we've been taking. But really since, like I said, about 2012, I came on board and started building up this infrastructure that said, how do we build North Carolina companies that want this technology, right? How do I do quick aerial survey, be it for agriculture, so I can go fly over a farm like Precision Hawk's doing down there in the bottom right corner? Uh, or Trimble up here, Trimble, the big navigation GPS company that says, let's go fly and do surveys. Uh, that's what they want to be able to do. So here's a tool for doing that. How do we help those kind of companies come to North Carolina and build here? Let's you know, involve our engineers that say, yes, we can go make this. If Lowe's was to come say, let's put a UAV on every shelf and every Lowe's across the country so you can check it out for the weekend and go survey, fly around your house before you tear up a spring garden. Maybe a good idea. I don't know. Uh, right now, they'll pull up Google imagery and, or, um, and, and Google Earth pictures could be, what, a year and a half, two, three years old. Uh, how about doing something new? How about actually go take those pictures live? Uh, so let's turn on our engineers to go do that. North Carolina's got every environment we would possibly want to test in except for deserts. We can use that. Let's offer those resources now through a managed program to say, okay, we know who's flying and where they're flying. Once we've done that testing in those environments, Let's put it back in those engineers' hands and say, okay, make me a product, right? Let's build this thing that does this need so that a user can do it. How do you make these things so smart that anybody can do it? We've got manufacturing in the state. We already know how to make airplanes. We've been flying them here for quite a while. Um, that's never going to change. Um, but we know how to make them too. We've got airframers. We've got software people. You guys are producing electronics people. You're producing engineers. You're producing all kinds of people that fit those roles so that we can actually then go fly. And then we're gonna start taking pictures like the stuff down here in the bottom left. This is high resolution imagery that a remote sensing analyst uses or that an agronomist uses now. And we know how to produce agronomy kind of people out of NC State, ECU, all of our schools have strong programs in that. So now we're actually not only building engineers, but we're also building the operator that says, okay, I know what my requirements are to fly this. I understand how airspace works. Uh, I understand the imagery that I'm now pulling off of this to say that's high resolution elevation data that I can now use for construction industry. We build all that into it. We know how to sustain these things and keep these things up and flying because if it's sitting on a shelf somewhere, it's not making anybody any money because if I bought it and I'm using it now as a surveyor or as a contractor, uh, if I've just got it sitting on my shelf, that means I'm not out working. So how do we get them out and actually use that 
and build up that whole industry. So that's the ecosystem we've been trying to build now for about three years. That'll support industry growth so we can grow companies here just like these guys over here want to start companies. We want to see those companies started here too. Precision Hawk down in the bottom right corner, uh, that company is based here in Raleigh. Uh, they've got about 85 people right now. They're hoping to be 150-ish, certainly by the end of the summer, maybe by the end of the year. Um, building that airplane, they actually build them up in Canada, makes export controls a little easier. Uh, but they're building them and they're flying them out of here. They're shipping out a lot of people to go fly internationally because it's allowed to fly internationally for commercial business. Um, we're also working the policy side of this. Back to those things that math people aren't supposed to be doing, hanging out the legislature, mm, not a good idea. Um, but I'm doing it anyway. So we're trying to say, okay, how do we manage these things? How do we grow this here? Who, who is flying? Where are they flying? How does DOT uh, permit that, just like you get your driver's license today? Uh, so that we can do all these different things. The Phantom flying, this was this guy here, uh, flying up in the top right. That was flying at the uh, state fair back in the fall. Uh, just kind of showing that off, and we'll be doing that again this fall. The, the middle picture there on the right uh, is a near-infrared photography flying up at the NC State Butner Farm uh, where black spots on there are actually some of our cows. Uh, they're not reflecting chlorophyll. That's a good thing. Uh, so those aren't uh, infrared, so those aren't black hot, but those would be uh, near-infrared, so no chlorophyll reflectivity. Um, where are we flying today? And this is actually my last slide, so I'm not going to bore you with a bunch of slides. But we've got six places we're allowed to fly today. Our office is the only one that the FAA has approved for flying. Public agencies are allowed to fly once they've received a certificate of authorization. That's an FAA waiver that says, yes, you have certified your airplane is safe to fly, which we've done for both of these. Uh, and you've certified a crew that says, I always have a private pilot in the mix, uh, so that's who I get to go hire. Uh, so we've got 16 of these waivers from the FAA. We spread those across six different locations, across 11 different aircraft today. That'll probably be 20 airplanes by the end of the year. Uh, each of those aircraft does have an end number, a tail number, just like a Cessna 172, just like a big Boeing airplane. The FAA knows every one of those airplanes. Uh, we started flying. We had first flight part two on March 21st, 2013. Uh, we went out to uh, Hyde County Airport. Anybody been to Hyde? Nobody's out there. It's a great place to fly. Uh, and we actually love going out to Hyde. Uh, it's a big airport area. There's somewhere three on our, uh, on our chart there uh, of the map. Uh, we've been flying for about 300 flights. I think we're actually up to about 320 now uh, and closing in on right around 100 flight, flight hours total. Our typical flight times to do an ag mission, go survey a field, is about 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, we're working with the FAA. We're doing all of our airspace integration stuff. Our aircraft range from about these little guys like this, two or three pounders, up to that helicopter. That's a 300-pound helicopter that they've been flying for 25 years in Japan to do crop spraying in Japan. Um, so... Uh, that's where we're at. That's this industry we're trying to build. We're trying to grow in the state. Uh, lots of research at NC State. I was talking to Elizabeth, um, East Carolina before I came in. I was talking with Elizabeth City State. This is a UNC system-wide thing we're trying to build into it where everybody gets to fly under our architecture uh, and our model so the FAA, the state knows who is flying and what they're doing with it. So uh, there's my stuff. Daryl knows how to get a hold of me. Uh, we'd love to host a demonstration, small groups, please, uh, but we can do that over at the NC State Lake Wheeler Farm, or if there's any of these other sites that are closer to you, let me know. Uh, we're happy to do that and, uh, and kind of coordinate that when we're out doing some test flights. Uh, and we've got all kinds of cameras, all kinds of things to show off. So uh, I think I've got time for questions.